Hi everyone. Uh, today's podcast is for you if you are a 3D animator, 3D modeler, or if you are looking to include 3D uh, in any of your products, any of your businesses. So I'll have uh, Abhinav uh, from our team at Queplin uh, who will talk about uh, various aspects of 3D modeling, and especially we'll focus on. poly counts what is a low poly uh, 3d model what is a high poly 3d model and what are the various usages differences etc of these two so stay tuned very interesting podcast ahead hello everyone welcome to the metaverse guy podcast oh. I'm Praful Mathur co-founder of Vossel and Greplin and I'll be your host for today In this podcast we discuss augmented reality virtual reality web3 basically all the constituent elements of the metaverse how it impacts you how it impacts the world and what will be the future of all the life that we live because of all these technologies if you are a technology enthusiast if you are a marketer or if you are an entrepreneur you will find a lot of important information in our podcasts and if you do find this helpful please subscribe to our channel the metaverse guy podcast so without further ado let's start today's podcast uh, as i said i have abhinav uh, with me from uh, queplin team uh, abhinav before we start the podcast why don't you introduce yourself uh, to the audience tell us more about what you do thank you for having me uh, hey guys i am abhinav i am currently leading a 3d team at queplin Uh, that creates models and assets for 3D OOH experiences and advertisements, augmented reality and virtual reality. I am currently involved in Vossel-based web augmented experiences. So, Abhinav, tell us more about before we get into uh, today's topic of uh, you know high polys and low polys. Tell us first to set a context for the audience. Tell us first about what is 3D modeling, what is 3D animation. what are the various aspects of it all right so let's first talk about the primary things what is uh, 3d modeling so in technical 3d modeling is just create 3d asset from 2d planes or 2d polygons 2d closed polygons that can either be triangles or squares or pentagon but we mostly prefer triangles and squares uh, so creating these three dimensional models from these two dimensional polygons this is what 3d modeling is the next step from 3d modeling is 3d texturing just giving colors and the look and feel of what real life materials and colors are to the 3d models that you created is 3d texturing so that's uh, the basic definition of what 3d model and texture is coming to the various aspects of 3d modeling is different types of 3d modeling we can categorize 3d modeling as uh, in three primary different type the first hard surface modeling the second would be character modeling or organic modeling and the third sci-fi inorganic slash mixed modeling where you combine both of these aspects that i said earlier the first one being the hard surface modeling and second one being the character modeling and combining them as to create an inorganic and an imaginary object from scratch so those are the three primary distinct formats in which we do 3d modeling coming to the more technical part uh, for 3d modeling that is how do we classify 3d modeling in terms of technicalities let's say we classify 3d modeling in terms of its polygon count so how do we do that so there are two primary types of 3d modeling in terms of polygon counts high poly 3d modeling and low poly 3d modeling now how do we classify that so classifying low poly 3d modeling for instance would be creation of 3d model with the lowest number of 2d polygons that you can would be the general definition of low poly uh, 3d model similar for the high poly 3d modeling obviously this is in context to what you are doing but high poly 3d modeling would be creating of a 3d model with as much 2d polygons as you can so as to define its shape better and give better smooth characteristics to its mesh this is what a high poly uh, 3d model is all of those technicalities are very interesting and because today we are addressing people who are in the modeling animation space 
so they will find this very interesting and this is what i want to tell our audiences as well because today's podcast can be a little more technical in nature so this is largely focusing on the modelers and animators uh, out there but this is also giving a lot of information to brand managers or game uh, creators who want to understand various 3d modeling aspects related to them but all this is very interesting and we'll actually create separate podcast for these technical aspects as well but today i want to delve deeper into high poly and low poly so while you talked about low poly is when you have lower poly counts for uh, high poly counts you have high polys but can you give us a more concrete definition in terms of what is the range of poly count below which you would say it's a low poly is there some sort of a distinction in that and what are the other distinguishing factors between uh, low poly and high poly uh, 3d models right so established distinctions between low poly and high poly depending on what context we are using it for so context can be if you are using using it to build mobile applications or we are building it to use game development uh, scenario or we are building it for triple a ads or animation cinematic animation stuff so this is how we can classify it and certainly break it into uh, multiple parts so let's say you're building a web or mobile application and you're doing 3d modeling for that limits for low poly modeling for mobile application development certainly be much lower than what it would be for a game development environment so the limits always depend on what your context is let's say you're developing a game your low poly limit would be kind of around 40000 polys to 50000 polys that is a perfectly justifiable low poly limit for a game environment but as soon as we convert this port into a mobile game or mobile app development 3d modeling scenario the 40000 to 50000 limits converts to a high poly limit whereas the low poly limit for the mobile ar or mobile app development scenario would be just 10000 polys or uh, around 12000 polys so that's how we can kind of differentiate between the uh, limits depending on the context apart from that the more solid uh, or the more apparent uh, classification for high poly and low poly would be the detail levels in each individual in case of the low poly uh, models the details won't be as much in terms of mesh there won't be much uh, detail in mesh but there is a lot of detail in textures that baked into the model because of this lack of detail in mesh part becomes a lot lighter in terms of computational need of computational power to render it need of space to get it held there in these terms it becomes a lot lighter uh, as compared to a high poly model it requires a lot of computational power requires a lot of rendering time to get rendered even and a lot of pre-work and kind of adjusting the whole file to be compatible for one workflow for it to get um, adjusted to it that's how we can kind of classify low poly and high poly uh, modeling in terms of context so while this is a little technical if we were to drill it down for uh, what are the different usages of low poly and what are the usages of high poly so if you can give a sense of that to our audience they'll be able to set a context to it so while we understand as you said high poly and low poly that depends on what context you're building it for uh, so can we define those context uh, you know where or if i were to simplify my question what i'm asking is where do you use low poly models and where do you use high poly 3d models let's talk about the uses of low poly models first so the characteristics of low poly models are one they are lightweight second they don't need much computational powers uh, requirement for uh, it to get rendered and third these are really lightweight models and because of that the rendering time is almost real time and that's why augmented reality and virtual reality applications can really fast approach uh, to them and get get them rendered almost in real time so the most apparent use cases of low poly models would be augmented reality apps virtual reality uh, games and applications third would be your gaming scenario where you are creating games for either mobile platforms or augmented reality or virtual reality platforms and the last but not the least is, would be uh, your metaverse platforms the sandbox or decentraland so platforms like those where real-time rendering is a necessity and really lightweight uh, models are the prime examples of what uh, assets should be there so that's that is the use cases of uh, low poly models coming to high poly models high poly models 
as their character characteristics goes they are high in detail high in texturing detail there are a lot of computational power requirements uh, to get those rendered are a lot of time requirement and effort requirement from the team as well to get them made as well so these kind of assets are well made for aaa commercials where such as a product showcase where you are are uh, trying to showcase all the details all the niche details of a product or you are building a uh, architectural visualization scene where you are kind of visualizing the concept of a creator um, to them or to a client uh, where you are in need of as much detail as possible so that's the use case for the high poly uh, models and is there a possibility wherein you can also give us the industries where these use cases are uh, implemented so uh, in terms of low poly uh, models the industries would of course be augmented reality and virtual reality um, so the industries could be fmcgs uh, education industry that has come a lot into uh, augmented reality metaverse is a big player uh, in that uh, in terms of high poly uh, uh, models uh, you can go to architectural visualization uh, first of all uh, then product visualization and product uh, showcases such as mobile uh, uh, ads smartphone ads or uh, automotive showcases things like these that demand a lot of uh, detail from the product itself uh, that can be categorized into uh, high poly models interesting so just to elaborate on that what you mean uh, when you say fmcg is when any fmcg or a cpg company is creating their marketing experiences so let's say they create their web augmented reality experience uh, to give their audience an engaging marketing campaign uh, and get more uh, users to see their brand increase their lead funnels on the awareness stage which is where uh, a lot of uh, low poly uh, 3d models are used for that web ar or web augmented reality experience and on the flip side if this was more of an industrial use case which is where you are creating digital twins uh, in that case you would use a high poly uh, 3d model yeah uh, okay that's very interesting up enough uh, we understand what 3d aspects are what are uh, poly counts low poly high poly where you use them um, finally if you can give some pointers uh, to our audience as to you know how can they create low poly experiences low poly 3d models and make them look like a high poly uh, 3d model because see you want to create low poly 3d models because they are easier for rendering in augmented reality and because of network latencies you want the experience to load faster and that's why you want to keep the footprint of the 3d model low and hence low poly but you still want to make them look good you know that which you can achieve through high poly uh, 3d models so what are those steps that uh, you take when creating low poly 3d models so as to make them look much better like a high poly 3d model right uh, so the there's a process which translates getting a high poly model and making it uh, its details into a low poly model so as to keep the footprint of of the overall model low but also uh, bring in the detail of the high poly mesh into it as well so as it looks uh, more beautiful than uh, what a regular low poly 3d model is so the process goes as you first create a low poly 3d model of whatever uh, you are creating and in the meanwhile and like parallelly create a high poly model as well for the same thing right these are not textured models these are just 3d meshes uh two meshes one low poly one high poly we then convert the high poly model take it into a 3d painting software and we bake out its detail on two texture maps so we use maps like normal maps we use maps like um height maps and displacement maps so as to keep the 3d mesh lighter but make the texturing area more complex so as to it so as it brings in more details in terms of uh, texturing rather than increasing the number of polys in mesh so after bringing in detail uh, with normal maps and uh, displacement maps and height maps what we do is we bring in additional uh, detail in terms of texturing we bring in uh, artificial shadowing we bring in uh, displacement and ambient occlusion so that many dark parts of the model 3d model are enhanced just like uh, how it will look in a 
proper 3D mesh where high poly uh, crevices are made. After that, we bring in emissive details as well. If your uh, model is emitting light from somewhere, we bring in those emissive details as well in the from the textures. Uh, lastly, what we do is we also bake the light onto the textures as well. So as we don't need more computational powers to uh, render the model or calculate the light in real time environment as well. So what we do is we set up a, a generic lighting condition for the model to be viewed perfectly from every angle. And we then bake that light, do those uh, calculations in the software as well and bake those on to the textures so that we don't have to recalculate the light every time we uh, load the model into an environment. That's the basic process of how uh, we get a low poly uh, 3D model to look like a high poly 3D model. Excellent. I'm sure this information will be very helpful for anybody who's trying to create uh, any web augmented reality experience uh, and they want to achieve much better qualities even when they are creating low poly uh, 3D models. Finally, I mean, we've, we've talked a lot about the technical aspects and this podcast has been very insightful and technical. Coming to the creative side of things, finally, uh, what tips would you give to any 3D modeler or animator, uh, especially when they are targeting to create augmented reality uh, based uh, 3D models? Should be their approach uh, for you know, achieving higher creativity. So my first suggestion uh, would be to just let your imagination fly. Um, right? there, there should be no limits or boundaries in terms of uh, technicalities or what you say, um, imagination, so as to limit what your concept of a basic idea is. Right? You, you don't have to limit any, um, any technicalities on the idea or the concept uh, depending on whatever context of the uh, idea is. So just to uh, clarify, as a reference, if uh, let's say if you're uh, creating an AR experience for a smartphone, you don't have to think that your smartphone would have to look like an actual smartphone that is currently present in the market. It does not need to be an actual smartphone. It can be anything you want to be, right? It, it can it can represent any uh, anything in your mind. It just have to do the functions that a smartphone does uh, to be presented as a smartphone, right? Uh, you can think of uh, animations in cartoons as well, like Tom and Jerry, uh, where gravity works as and when Tom looks towards the ground, right? Things like those uh, and, and just not limiting your creativity. Uh, the second thing would be to grasp more than the one thing that is in front of you. So let's say if the idea is about a hammer, right? So you have to uh, go into context and think about the backstory of the hammer, which age is the hammer from, what materials are used in the hammer. And those, those kind of ideas and things would then bring uh, clarity to your uh, 3D object or the experience that you're making and and bring a closer to likeliness uh, or, or reality uh, uh, approach for that idea and, and bring it more closer to what uh, reality is. Um, so these kind of things like um, thinking what the materials of some object if you're making uh, come from, what the properties of those materials are, um, thinking in terms of these uh, uh, technicalities would also lead to a better uh, outcome than uh, if you're generating one without thinking about these. So uh, these are some tips from, from me. I like that, that gravity only works when you look at the ground. <laughs> but, you know, this is very interesting. And one thing which I want to clarify here is what Abhinav is talking about is more from the perspective of when you're creating, uh, when you're creating marketing campaigns, uh, interesting engagement elements that you have to put in you don't have to confine yourself within the laws of physics you can let your imaginations go wild however this is different from when you're creating product visualizations so if you're creating a furniture try on in augmented reality then in that case you want that furniture item to exactly look like that furniture item so depending on what use case you have what abhinav is suggesting is that you can if you are creating something uh, on the campaign side of things, brand uh, engagement campaign, you can let your imaginations uh, run wild. Great uh, thoughts and ideas and some very insightful discussion, uh, Abhinav. I really am hopeful that this is very helpful for our users and they will benefit from this. Um, 
what uh, we'll also do is I'll put a link to uh, our uh, blog to uh, uh, you know for for you to understand 3D uh, low poly versus high poly and all of this discussion that we've had uh, we'll have it on a link as well which will be in the description uh, down below. Please let us know uh, uh, what you thought about this discussion uh, by putting your comments uh, uh, in the comment line below. Thank you very much. You take care.